There are credits and then there are credits, but which one do you use? We'll be taking a look at the type of credit that you need to use, whether it's a refund receipt, a delayed credit, a supplier credit, a credit card credit, or an adjustment to an invoice. Some of the questions that you might ask yourself some days are, how can I refund the client after I've received his money in the bank? Can I show a credit against a client for the next invoice? How can I send a credit note so the invoice is reduced? My supplier has sent me a credit amount. What do I do with this? I have received a credit card credit. I can see it on the statement. How do I enter this in? And the list will go on and on. So let's take a look at the most common credits. The transactions that we'll be using are all found under the Create button and then either the Customer column or the Supplier column. So let's take a look at these. So let's take a look at the Refund Receipt. Under the Customer column, Refund Receipt, couple of things you need to be aware of, make sure you choose the right customer. Then the actual date, refund from, now what bank account is it going to come from? Okay, then just remember to make sure that you choose the correct service that you provided in the first place, so in this case it was consulting. Just be aware if you're inclusive and exclusive, what are you really sending out back to the client? In this case, I'm just going to select inclusive because we're going to send him back $1,000. It could be that he overpaid you or it could be that he's uh, that you've actually had to give him something back as in the service that you didn't provide. So various reasons why you might send out a refund. And let's click save and close. And that's how easy it's done, everyone. And what will happen is when that transaction comes through into your bank feed, you'll be able to match that nicely. So that was a refund receipt. Now let's take a look at the delayed credit. Now a delayed credit is a non-posting transaction. So this is not going to affect your bank account and it's not going to affect your customer balance until of course it's applied to an actual invoice. So you might be expecting some returns or uh, there might be um, uh, an issue where one of your staff members has gone out to your customer, they weren't happy with the service that was provided and in goodwill, in good faith, you've said, uh, look, you've actually paid me the bill, so what I'll do is I'll give you a credit next time you purchase my services. They were happy with that. So what we're actually doing is we're putting in the system a delayed credit so we don't forget that we've promised the client a credit when he then comes in to purchase from us once again. So let's take a look at a delayed credit. So under the new customers column, delayed credit. The customer in this particular case was Harry Royal and the date. Now, what we've actually said is that we we're going to give him back $1,000 just to keep him as a good customer because we know Harry's got lots of friends and he'll go around telling everyone what great service he got from us. So $1,000, save and close. That's how easy that was. Then next time Harry comes in, we produce an invoice for Harry. So let's put in Harry's name once again and have a look at the right hand side. You can see then that we've actually got that credit sitting there that we had actually promised him. So this way you don't forget it. So let's just say that we are providing him some maintenance at his residential property. It's going to cost him $40,000. Don't forget your inclusive and, and exclusive of GST, right? So in this case it's 40 plus $4,000, which is GST, and we are going to apply this credit that we promised him back $1,000. And there you have it, everyone. So that now has reduced to $39,000, and the balance is due $42,900. Let's click Save and Close, and that is 
easy way of recalling if you promised a client a thousand dollars uh sorry any amount of credit or it could be that um you know you might have a business where it could be um you know in retail and and they've returned the actual goods and you've got a credit waiting in the system for for them so that way you don't forget that credit okay don't forget it's a non-posting credit uh, non-posting transactions so it won't affect your bank and it won't affect the balance of the client so just record that one that's a good little one to uh, to have up your sleeve a delayed credit the next one we want to take a look at is the supplier credit okay so this will be the other way around where we've had our supplier and he's given us a bill and let's just say that uh, he's realized after he sent us his invoice that he accidentally uh, overcharged us. So in this particular case, uh, he sent us a credit. So for us to actually get it into the system, we then, uh, let's just say, we'll choose the, the supplier. Okay, and, and now in QuickBooks, it's pretty smart because it actually recalls the last time that we used Rick's Carpentry Services, we actually applied it to a category called cost of sale contractors. That's perfect because that's where we want to put the credit to because we would have processed the bill first that the uh, supplier sent to us and now we've got the credit. So let's just say in this particular case, the credit was $1,000. So I'm going to override the last credit that uh, Rick's Carpentry Services sent us. And again, just make sure you've got inclusive or exclusive. So we're given a flat $1,000. So it'll be inclusive of GST. And let's click Save and Close. So now what we do is we're going to apply that credit against the bill for Rick's Carpentry Services. So let's go down to Suppliers. Let's find Rick's Carpentry Services. There it is there. And we can see that we've got overdue $30,000, but we've actually got a credit there of $1,000. So altogether we owe $29,000. So let's pay this bill. I'm just trying to find the bill. There it is there, $30,000. This is another way that, uh, oops, this is actually being paid. So here's the bill here, we'll pick that one up. Now we'll make a payment. Now look what actually happens with the $30,000 that knows we've got a supply credit in the system for $1,000, so it automatically pays against that $30,000. So um, <clears throat> if we were going to pay it today, we'd actually process this against the bank. But if we are do not want to pay this bill today and we just want to apply that credit to the bill, all you need to do is just put in the amount of the credit against the bill. Physically, we're not receiving any cash whatsoever in our bank, so of course it's going to be zero. The date, I've left it at the date that we did the bill, and I am going to save and close. So now let's take a look at that bill that we had uh, outstanding there I think it was around 21 here it is here so we've got the bill for $30,000 and let's open that up and you can see that it's now $29,000 okay because the $30,000 has uh, we've processed that credit thousand dollars so we've got twenty nine thousand dollars left so that's another way of making sure that you do pay the correct amount when you've got a credit against a bill because a lot of the times i see credits processed in quickbooks but then the credit has been forgotten to be applied against the bill and then you go ahead and you pay the total amount you've still got the credit sitting there so just be wary of that, okay? So don't forget that extra second step there. The next one we want to take a look at is the credit card credit. Under suppliers, credit card credit. Now, this is really handy for the every time you get a credit card credit, you can process this manually as we're about to do, 
Or the other quick way is if you have your bank or credit card syncing into QuickBooks Online, it will actually come through into your uh, banking center and you'll be able to apply the deposit which will be a credit card credit. But let's take a look at how we actually process a credit card credit manually. Um, so let's choose our favorite shop, Bunnings, because we're a construction industry. I'm going to leave that credit card sitting there. And yes, it's recalled every time we've purchased uh, anything at Bunnings, it's gone to cost of sales materials. The last time we did a credit card credit for Bunnings was $500, but in this particular case, we're going to choose $250. So this is the manual way that you would process a credit card credit. And I've just done this to show you how to do it because you could very well have a credit card that doesn't sync into QuickBooks Online. So when you go to do a manual bank reconciliation, you will actually select this and it will balance to the statement that you have. The other way that you can do this is if we have the credit card syncing into QuickBooks Online and you've received the credit from the staff member that has gone down to Bunnings and asked for the credit, you can process this now. And if you process this and uh, to the right credit card, this will actually match the actual transaction coming through from the bank sync in the in the, in the uh, banking center. So let's take a look at this for this $250. And I'll also show you another way uh, that's really quick and easy without having to do the manual process, okay? So let's click save and close. So let's take a look at banking. As you can see on the 2nd of November, we have a credit there for $157. And on the 1st of November, we had the debit for the spent amount for $157. So you can see we must have gone to Bunnings on the 1st, and then we went to get the refund on the 2nd. It happens. Now, all you need to do is just make sure that this is actually being selected and added in correctly. So you can see that we were actually matching to a rule. So we know that's going to be correct. So it's cost of materials and it's GST on purchases. We quickly click add. The next thing that we want to do is that deposit. We want to put it back to the right account, the same account that we actually processed the original $157 to. So it's under received column. The supplier, customer name is Bunnings. The category that we put it under was cost of materials. And yes, we had selected GST on purchases. And we click add. How easy was that? Okay, now let's go to our credit card and have a look at the credit card credit. And as you can see, the credit card credit that we've actually processed has actually matched the credit card credit. And there's the debit from the day before, okay? It doesn't look as if the rule is actually uh, matching in the credit cards. It might just be the way that the rule has been set up. But again, we'd actually put these goods cost of sales materials. It's got GST. Let's click add. And the credit card credit, because we've actually processed it prior uh, as per the credit card credit, um, it's all sitting there and all we need to do is click match. Pretty easy. That's a credit card credit. Now, the last one I want to show you is the adjustment. Now, the reason we would use the adjustment note is if we've uh, sent out an invoice to a client, the client rings us and says, uh, I haven't received the total amount of what I was waiting for, or it could very well be that we've accidentally overcharged them. Could be various reasons why we need to do an adjustment to an invoice. So this is the way that you would do it. Let's click on adjustment note. And in this particular case, we will choose Annie Smith. And the adjustment note, again, it's like the credit that we've got to actually apply the and reduce the income that we produce the original invoice. So we had, uh, had uh, chosen consulting and the adjustment note we are going to choose. Now, just watch this, guys. It's already recalled the previous time we've done the adjustment note for Annie Smith. 
Okay, be very, very careful because if you don't change it, you'll only have, uh, you may have the incorrect adjustment note amount, okay? In this particular case, we're going to do $1,000 to Annie. And that's what we're going to do and adjust her invoice. So again, watch the exclusive and inclusive part. I don't want 1,100, I only want 1,000. So I change that to inclusive and then I just choose my, and type in my $1,000, I've got it. Cool, Annie Smith, save and close. So let's take a look at how to apply that adjustment note to the invoice. There's various ways that you can do it, but this is the way that I do it. I click on receive payment. I'll put in the customer name. The date, I leave it on the date that I've received the adjustment note, so that's correct. And you can see QuickBooks is pretty smart. It's actually applied already the adjustment note against this particular invoice. Now, I'm happy with that because it was that invoice that I'm adjusting. Um, but what you need to be aware of is it could very well be a different invoice because if Annie had 10 different invoices in the system, you need to ensure that you apply the adjustment note against the correct invoice. And we have not received any physical money, so that is correct. And all you need to do is click save and close. And then what I would do is I would actually go and find that invoice for Annie. Annie Smith. Uh, here it is here. And you can see now that our balance is only $17.50. Here's a tip, guys. Another way, instead of trying to find the client, trying to find the invoice, this is the quickest way of doing it. Don't forget your magnifying glass. So this is where we're going to find that invoice that I've actually just processed the adjustment to. So I'm just going to click the invoice. And there it is there. So you can see that was much quicker than me having to go through that whole rigmarole of finding the client, finding the right invoice, and making sure that the, the uh, adjustment's been applied to the correct invoice. And then, of course, we would save and send that out to Annie, and she knows we've actually applied that invoice. So that's it, everyone, for the credits, the adjustment notes, the credit card credits. You can see it's fairly easy to do. You just have to make sure that you're choosing the correct one. Don't forget that delayed charges credit as well. Sorry, the delayed credit. There is also delayed charges as well because that's the opposite if you ever need to use that. We've used the delayed credit today, so take a look at that. Now, that's how easy it gets with these credits, but if there is something that... Uh, you want to know or you've got difficulties with, just reach out to me. Click below on the YouTube channel so that you follow me and you'll find all the new videos coming through shortly. Thank you.